everyone, and uh, as we like to say, welcome to the Zero Project family. We have over 3,200 participants all around the world who have tuned in today. And uh, even though we won't be able to meet in person, I think this virtual conference really democratizes access as we talk about uh, disability inclusion and specifically in this partner channel session organized by JDC Israel Unlimited, talking about ICT solutions and how they can enable independence for persons with disabilities. Before I hand it over, I really wanna give a big, big, big thank you to Ayala and her team for putting together this partner channel session because this is what makes the Zero Project Conference. Without the input of trusted and valued partner organizations such as the JDC Israel Unlimited, we wouldn't be able to do this. So uh, again, we are well aware of all the resources you've put in and of all the coordination you've put in. You've read my emails, I've read your emails. So there really has been a lot of effort which has been put in here. So thank you for that. And uh, as Ifrat mentioned recently and before uh, at the beginning of uh, the hour, we also have a lot of really valued partners from the public sector, which are here. You know, I'm scrolling through and seeing uh, Ilana Gleitman from the Ministry of Social Affairs and other um, uh, participants, which again speaks to the work JDC does, the outreach they do in Israel. And um, I'll leave it at this uh, en enough from me. Ayala, the stage is yours. Thank you again for everything. Thank you very much, Robin. And uh, thank you all uh, for joining us from all over the world. Uh, for a state session on tailoring tech for independence, the Smart Homes Initiative. So thank you for the Zero Project also for streaming the session live at the conference. Um, and before we begin, I'd just like to do a little bit of housekeeping. For those of you interested, um, there's simultaneous captioning for this session. Um, to turn it on, to see the bottom of your screen, there should be a little CC icon. Um, and there you'll, you'll see the option of either seeing subtitles or the full transcript on the side of your screen. Um, in addition, we're really happy and very interested to hear all of the, the questions from the audience um, for the sake of uh, the time and, and uh, making sure that everybody, um, our speakers have a chance to speak. Um, we ask that you keep your questions to the end of the presentation. Um, you can use the chat to raise any questions along the way, uh, but we'll be answering the questions at the end. And finally, please keep yourself on mute so that we can hear the speakers clearly and until the, the question and answer session at the end. Thanks. Efrat, over to you. Thank you, Ayala. So hi, everyone. Um, I'm really excited that you all joined us here today from Israel and from... Um, to visit my sister. He also said something about going to the mall independently to eat hamburger and ice cream. Many sister is also, as I said before, eager to see him, but, um, but she can't. Many wishes she was able to make the trip to her very often. And although he's very independent in some aspects of his life, he's, uh, he's not very, uh, he, he's has, he hesitating to go on a public transportation. So he uh, joined the Smart Homes program. In the, in the program, the, the staff trained him to how to ride, how to take the bus, how to use the public transportation. And he also received a smart watch with a GPS chip that allows him to make emergency calls to his sister and his staff in the group home. His sister and the caretakers are able to track his location so they can make sure that he's always safe. And uh, what does it mean for many? Many learned how to take the bus himself. He became more independent, giving a boost to his self-esteem and confidence. He loved, uh, in turn, his loved ones and caregivers are, are able to feel comfortable with his new level of independence because they now know they can always reach him. It's not just that he's going to his sister and to the mall to have fun. He's also now talking about going to his workplace on his own and he feels that something really changed in his life. 
So this is many and I most vulnerable populations and there is no population here than people with disabilities. In Israel, people with disabilities make up to 20% of the population. They find themselves on society's margins during normal times and even more during crisis like these days. Ensuring social participation for people with disabilities is not a matter of basic human justice. It's a condition for socioeconomic advent advancements and investment future for every single member of a society as a whole. So I'm here with my colleagues from the government, the business sector and the nonprofit world to share how we are working together to create a change. In today's world, almost a year into the corona pandemic, we can all appreciate how high tech solutions have become an integral part of our lives, whether for work, school, community events, doctor appointments and staying connected with our loved ones. So what does the Smart, Oven, in Smart Homes initiative do? Let's dive in. For people with disabilities, high tech can open up new worlds of possibilities, a world they are less reliant on others, where they have more independence while ensuring their security and safety. It gives them a chance to exercise their rights and to make their own choices. It gives them opportunities to become active members of society and also give care caregivers and family members greater peace of mind. But can you guess how many people with disabilities actually use tech, solu tech solutions? You should see now a poll question pop up on your screen. Let's see how much we know. and then all your answers. Okay, so I see most of you suggested the right answer, only one in 10. That means 90% of people are not using available technolog technology to enhance their quality of life. It's a lot. And how many tech solutions are out there that could help? Let's see how we do on this. You said 10,000. So the numbers are constantly raising, but today there are over 60,000 tech solutions out there. 60,000. I'd like to emphasize the term tech solutions. The standard term often used is assistive technologies. And yeah, just assist people with disabilities. But unlimited, we believe that breaking stigma starts with realizing that people with disabilities are just like the rest of us. And today, especially in this crazy time of Corona, reliance on technology solutions is something we have in common. So from now on, we'll be using the term tech solutions. Okay, so what's the holdup? Why only 10% of people with disabilities using these solutions? The answer is complex, but there are four main barriers. There is a serious lack of systemized information about tech solutions, leading to a lack of awareness in all parts of the system, from the person with disabilities themselves, caregivers, health services. Many people don't even think to check if there's a new tech out there to meet their needs. A Google search leads to an overwhelming number of options, but it is not clear what solution is best suited for a person's needs. Who would who could be consulted, consulted to learn more. 
Service providers often sell people solutions they don't need, and therefore a third unbased party is essential. But who? Procurement. A person with disabilities might decide that this is what they need, but what now? Who can help them procure by the technology? Will the government help co cover the costs? Who can help them personalize it and to fit their needs? And finally, let's say the person bought or received the technology. Who helps the person with disabilities integrate it to their lives? What about maintenance and keep? What if there are glitches? What if there are needs to change and the tech needs to be adjusted? Who they turn to? So uh, we have problems. What are the solutions? To find out, JDC Israel Unlimited underwent an intense study process to learn about uh, to learn what the needs what needs exist, and how we can find ways to overcome all barriers I just mentioned. We spoke with people with disabilities. We spoke to caregivers, families, professionals, and collaborated regarding best solutions. We studied models around the world and the different rules government have been uh, have been play playing. It was interesting to find out how varied it was. Some provided solution based on disability, some by functionality. Some provided full funding, some no funding at all. We came out from the study knowing that we wanted to work closely with the government to make sure that the program would reach national scale and impact on all Israelis with disabilities. As for the program itself, what did we learn from our study? We learned that there, there needs to be one process led by a professional that helps the person with disabilities from the beginning of the process through the end. The process needs to be flexible. It needs to address the needs of the individual also as they change. And finally, the caregivers are part of the picture and the process needs to support the caregivers as well as they play a major role in adaption, integration and constant use of the solution in the day to day. Now came the real work. How do we pull all this together? So our team came up with four goals. Increase the independence and quality of life of people with disabilities through tech solutions. Create a model that ensures full adoption and use of the technology by combining digital platforms and person-centered services. Test the economic efficacy of uh, tech solutions. For example, if they can replace uh, caregivers hours or allow more people with disabilities to enter the workforce. And changing policies and developing new procurement models to create nationwide change. This insights and goals are very important, but there is no better way to understand the impact and even in innovation of this model than to see it in action. We were eager to bring a participant to speak with you, but they were hesitant to present at the international conference. So I'd like to share a short video to give you a better sense of what these programs look like in a real life. וזה כל בוקר ככה חוזר על עצמו. לפני שנה התחילו לי כאבי ראש, שהתגברו. אני זוכר שצרחתי שם, נפלתי, ומאז לא זוכר, עד שקמתי אחרי הניתוח. אני מתעורר ואני לא מבין איפה אני נמצא. נולדתי מחדש. לכאורה, בן אדם שלם קם, אבל הוא יוצא מהחדר שלו והוא לא יודע לאן הוא יוצא. והוא לא יודע לאן הוא צריך לחזור. מסתבר שבלי זיכרון אפשר לעשות כלום. הכל היה נופל על סוזי. הייתי מתקשר אליה עשרות פעמים ביום. מה יש לנו היום? מה עושים היום? מה אני צריך לעשות? עכשיו היא עונה לי על משהו, ואחרי שתי דקות אני לא זוכר מה שאלתי אותה, ואני שואל בלופים. אבל כבר שאלת את זה, אבל כבר דיברנו על זה. אז אני מתעצבן, אבל, אבל אני לא זוכר, אני שואל אותך שוב. אז היה גורם למתח. מריבות, ויכוחים, אנטי מאוד גדול שפשוט מרחיק. והוא ניסה פתקים, והוא ניסה תזכורות בנייד, והוא ניסה אה, והישענות על, אה, עלינו, ותלות בנו, וכלום לא הלך, זה לא עזר לו, הוא לא זכר. ואז מגיע הממואב, שזה נקודת אור ענקית. אחד הפתרונות שהעבירו לבית הזה הרבה שקט ושלווה. התלות בנו, בבני הבית, יורדת. הממואב החזיר לי את השליטה, את 
השליטה של הסדר יום, של המעורבות, יום, תאריך, שעה, משימות. כל דינמי ומשתנה, ואני מזינה משימה ומוחקת משימה ומעלה תמונה ומוחקת שירים. עכשיו הייתה לי התראה קולית, זה אשתי השנייה קוראת לי, ואני יודע שצריך לקרות משהו או לעשות משהו, ואז אני הולך למימות. הוא מאוד מנותק רגשית, ואנחנו מאוד מנסים לחבר אותו. חגגנו לרונן יום הולדת כאן בגינה בחוץ, והוא היה מאושר, והרמנו אותו, ושרנו לו. זה נתן לי עכשיו לטעום, לטעום טעימה קטנה מהרגע המאושר הזה. זה בדיוק הרגע שהרמנו אותו, יאללה, אני, אני, אני מצליח לראות את האושר שלו בפנים. אז זה, זה עוד תפעול של המוח. הוא יכול לשתוק ולא לומר כלום, ויכול להגיע אותו רגע שנוטע בנו את התקווה. להמשך, לעתיד, שהוא נזכר. אני לא מסוגל לחשוב עכשיו מה היינו עושים בלי ימים. אני לא יודע אם, אתם, אם, אם המסר שאני מעביר לכם הוא, הוא מספיק כדי להמחיש לכם עד כמה זה חשוב הדבר הזה. זה עוזר לו מאוד. זה מציל אותו. וואו, this is a great example of how individuals' life can change with one new piece of technology. But now, how we make sure that this program goes to scale? How we can ensure that these types of solutions are accessible to all people with disabilities? From the get-go, it was clear that we needed to create a cross-sector model. That's where Ilana, Moran, and Orit come in. And I'm thrilled that you will be able to hear from each of them. Orit works for Beit Izi Shapira, a non-profit that provides services for adults and children with disabilities. Moran is our digital expert and the CEO of Advisor, a company that provides tech solutions to people with disabilities. And Ilana, our partner in the Ministry of Welfare, is making sure this process becomes part of a government package services, service, servicing people with disabilities. Not speaking today, but very much part of the process, Aravit Shaked from the Ministry of Health and Elia Friat from, the, from Digital Israel. So let's start with Orit. Who will share, Orit will share uh, more about the program, the process someone with disabilities go through from understanding their needs and goals to acquiring the tech they need to help them to get there. Orit is an occupational therapist, a therapist and a certified, certified uh, accessibility specialist. working with people with disabilities on adapting and implementing technology. She has been working at Bet Izi Shapiro for almost a decade and has been leading the Smart Homes programs since 2019. Orit. Yeah, hi, thank you, Efrat. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. I would like to start by saying that each person with disability has a unique needs, but most programs and organizations look at people through the lens of the diagnosis. and don't understand that two people with the same disability may have different needs, depending on what they achieve and how they per perceiving being independent. To accommodate the, the changing need between people, we built a process that provides us a gen with a general structure. The process includes three steps, referral from social media or government services, Step two includes evaluation of the person disability and specific needs, following with identification process for potential technological solutions, using advisor technology and professional managing the case. The, the final matching occurs and the person and the person decide which technology, technology is the best for them. Step three, purchasing and learning how to use the chosen products. To show you how it looks from the personal perspective, let's see the process we did with Daniel. Daniel is 55 years old, married with, with two girls, a social worker. He has vision deficits. Daniel almost can't see. We met with him, and the main needs uh, that Daniel raised were related to the door. He told us that it take him a few minutes to find the keyhole and open the door. And during the process, the light and the stairwell turns off a few times. Following the intake, we decided to focus on the following challenges. 
then I want you to get into the house faster and in case someone is knocks on the door to know who it is. The solutions we identified for Daniel included a digital biometric lock that opens based on the family member's fingerprints. The lock also includes blue light that allows Daniel to see where he needs to put his finger, even when the stairwell light is off and open the door. To know who is at the door, we purchased an Amazon ring, a doorbell that includes a camera. We connected the doorbell through Wi-Fi to Daniel's tablet. So Daniel can see who is at the door in a good resolution large screen. Instead of asking other people to see who is there. We learned that, that for new tech uh, solutions to be successful, they need to be used regularly. If the person does not use the technology solution frequently and as planned, the behavior will not change and the person will not actually benefit the tech, from the tech. Going back to our example, Daniel's adoptions of the technology was quick and simple. We saw a positive change, but it only lasted for a short time because we, real we realized that the family did not remember to charge the batteries of the camera. We decided the best solution would be to connect the camera directly to the electricity. As we installed more and more tech solutions for people throughout Israel, there were several conclusions that came up over and over and over and over again, which led us to some important insights. There are a wide variety of technological solutions out there. The search for these solutions included looking into many different fields, including aging and sports, and being creative about how to use them. There are many products already out there, out the tech market, that have a universal design approach, which can be accessed as easily as changing the settings in your phone. This means solutions are also available at a lower cost. Uh, through Smart Home Initiative, we created a new rule, the technology coordinator. Right now, the rule is played by an occupational therapist that supports the person with disabilities through the process and of adopting new tech into their li daily lives. The tech coordinator does the initial intake, maps the person needs, and the tech solution that may help, help them overcome the, their challenges. This rule is really important. All of us have at least one electric product we bought once upon a time that it's kept in the drawer because it's un uncomfortable for use, too small, too big, or it actually does things we don't really do, we don't really need. It's the same here. The tech coordinator's job is to find the best match between the person and the tech to make sure it's actually improved their lives and make, uh, le and make the lasting impact. Caregivers are vital. A person support team, whether family, friends, or professional experts are critical to the success of the process. Their engagement and support plays a, play a major role in turning tech solutions, short-term success into long-term habit. Out of the box thinking can, can be the difference between failure to success. For example, we have a client with a mental disability. He has a hard time waiting at crosswalks, elevators. He reports that he, he has daily episodes in which he hits himself and has even been warned by the police about his behavior. We are checking whether the his episodes are preceded by raising his pulse by providing him a sm with a smart watch. If this indeed the case, the watch could vibrate and warn him that an episode is coming and could remind him that he needs to calm down and, and control his breathing. 
this small change can make a significant impact. The follow-up process is the key. In, Daniel, in Daniel's case, with the smart doorbell, the tech was great, but a small issue such, such as charging the batteries uh, was what stood in the way of, of him actually using it. It was not fixed. If, it's not, no, if it was not fixed, the smart doorbell would, would go into this use. Okay, thank you. Fat. Thanks so much, Olit. I'm gonna switch over at flat because she's having some technical uh, issues. Um, it's amazing to have somebody so dedicated on our team, Olit. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing more about how this program brings tech to people with disabilities and is working to create a new model of care that brings together personal support and the world of tech. That brings us to our next inspira inspiring speaker, Mohan, who will share more about the tech solutions her company has to offer. Mohan has an MA in Rehabilitation Neuropsychology. Since 2016, she has served as a CEO of Advisor, an AI-based digital platform that enables collaboration between people with disabilities, professionals, and suppliers. Thank you, Mohan, for showing us how Advisor uses artificial intelligence to match tech to the unique needs of each person and provides that person with the best and most relevant products. Um, and also how we manage to see how that, that reaches the people at the end. Mohan, to you. Thank you, Ayala. Thank you. Uh, it is a great pleasure to be here today, and I'm very excited to share with you all uh, the way Advisor's digital platform is integrated in this new model of service we are presenting today. Um, Advisor is an AI-based digital platform for consultations and provision of technological solutions supporting people with disabilities and older people in their daily functioning. The platform is helping both end users and healthcare uh, and rehabilitation professionals in identifying the goals and needs of every person, selecting the right technological solution according to the unique profile of every person, and buying the tech in the market, in the open market with offers provided both locally and internationally. Um, so we need to approach the gap in use that Efrat has mentioned, the gap in use of technological solutions from a different angle today. We need to look at it from a needs perspective rather than a product perspective. We learned from world leading organizations like WHO, ILO, UN, that we are looking at a huge market. It is estimated that by 2050, 2 billion people would benefit from technological solutions and that this benefit is shown repeatedly in all research fields dealing with policy, economy, healthcare, welfare, education, and more all around the world. On the macro level and micro level, we're facing an urgent unmet need. 90% of the people who can benefit from using technological solutions to enable independent daily functioning do not have access to them. And when we're trying to identify one of the core issues for this problem, we learn that in this era, when we're flooded with information and technology advances in a way that every day we have new and exciting solutions presented to us, personalization, uh, personalization is a key uh, for optimal ad adoption of solutions. We need to be able to match between the unique profile of every user, consumer, and the profile of the technology offered to him or her, and to ask, does it address his or her personal needs and goals? When the match is optimal, the use of the solution is successful. When there is a mismatch between the profile of the person and the attributes of the technology, we see, for example, product abandonment ranging from 30% up to 75% in the first three months of use uh, and more. And of course, uh, we see high rates of lack of use. Technology can support this match. AI can support this match. Um, and the decision-making regarding the question, what the right solution for me is. We have spent three and a half years of research and development in creating a system that automatically analyzes products regarding their contribution to all relevant difficulties and needs. 
just just imagine that every technological solution has its own clinical identity card. So when a person is entering the platform, either by self-assessment process or by a process facilitated or supported by a professional and creates his own profile of capabilities, needs and goals, the platform makes the match and within seconds offers the user a marketplace of relevant solutions to choose from. This recommendation process is of course enhanced and optimized using crowdsourcing. The way every feed, that way every feedback that a user gives regarding a specific solution is integrated in the algorithm that learns continuously. As mentioned before, the platform is facilitating a multi-stakeholder process based on collaborative intelligence involving end users, firstly, and family members, healthcare uh, professionals, the experts in technology, manufacturers and suppliers and policymakers and governmental ministries, all joining forces and knowledge to shape a new model of service. In that spirit, let me introduce you to Moshe. He's one of Smart Home's newest clients. After the intake process with Orit, uh, advisor was used to match him with the best tech solutions to match his goals and needs. So let's take a look. בעצם לפני שלוש שנים התחלתי להרגיש כאבים בגוף עד כדי כך שלא הצלחתי ללכת. בעצם היום אתה עם כיסא גלגלים ממונע, נכון? ובגלל תקופת הקורונה אז אתה בעיקר בבית. ברגע שאני יורד מהכיסא הממונע אז ואני יושב על... קורסה או שוכב לנוח, אז אני כל הזמן צריך לקחת איתי סוג של ערכה, שזה שלטים, ומספיק שאני שוכח אחד מהם, אז הייתי סוג של מנותק, אלא אם כן אני מבקש ממישהו שיעשה את זה. כשהייתי צריך בעצם עזרה, הייתי צריך לקרוא למישהו. אז איך הלך הבוקר עם התקנה? בסדר גמור, ברוך השם, אני ‫בתוך האפליקציה יש לנו פה ‫את שלושת העמודים הראשיים, ‫תכף אני אסביר לך מה כל אחד עושה. ‫המפגש הראשון שלי עם המערכת החכמה, ‫זה כבר מראה לי שזה כבר עוזר. ‫הנה המזגן סלון שלנו, נכון? ‫-כן. ‫עושה תרגול. ‫היי גוגל, פליז טרן אוף ב-AC. ‫אוקיי, טרנינג AC אוף. עם הפתרונות ששמנו, אז דרך הטלפון או בפקודה קולית אתה יכול להפעיל את התאורה, נכון? בסלון ובמטבח, וטלוויזיה ומזגן בסלון, גם בחדר שינה. שאלו אותי, למה לא קראת לי? אני אומר, אני לא צריך לקרוא, אני לוחץ על הכפתור ואני מפעיל בעצמי, וזה... זה עשה לי את היום. נראה לאנשים במצב שלי פתרון מצוין. אתה עושה דברים מא' עד ת' פעולה בלי שמישהו בעצם עוזר לך. מרגיש פתאום שווה, כאילו, שאני יכול לעשות משהו בעצם בלי שמישהו יהיה בסביבה שלי. Seeing this video, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can, Afrat. We can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. I had here problem with electricity. So seeing uh, these videos and hearing the personal stories, that's what this program is all about. It's about improving quality of life for Israeli citizens, one person at a time. But in order to really create change, We need the government to help make sure that every person with disabilities is able to access these tech solutions. 
And that leads me to our last speaker today, Ilana Gleitman from the Israeli Ministry of Welfare. She holds a PhD from the Tel Aviv University School of Social Work and has been working for the last 15 years in bringing services and tax solutions to people with disabilities. Ilana has extensive experience in developing, piloting, and managing programs for the visually impaired and hard of hearing. As I mentioned in our mapping before, piloting the smart home program, we looked at service models around the world. We found that many countries proudly share lists of the tech solutions they offer to citizens through their health and social services system. But here in Israel, our approach is quite different. Ilana, together with our partners, uh, Ilana, together with our partners in the Ministry of Health, is changing the way the government looks at providing services for people with this. Thank you, Efrat. Hello, everybody. In Israel, there are two ministries that support people with disabilities, the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Social Affairs. The Ministry of Health provides services for people with mental health issues, and the Ministry of Social Services provides services for all other disabilities. In this program, these two ministries are working together to ensure that all people with disabilities receive the same uh, resources. I represent the Ministry of Social Services. Since 2017, the approach towards services for people with disabilities has undergone significant changes. It included a, both a new approach based on the WHO's international classification regarding functionality, disability, and health, the ICF model that broke down services not just by diagnosis, but also by personal needs and goals. The ministry also declared that it would uh, take in, uh, steps to provide innovative and up-to-date services and acknowledge uh, tech solutions as a basic necessity. These insights are based on a customer journey, research, our experience and knowledge. Um, I, I would like to, to show you our, uh, uh, those insights. Uh, uh, up until uh, recently, uh, we uh, uh, published a list of uh, uh, subsidized aids. Uh, there are more than 40 different kinds of devices on this list. Even though uh, this is nice, it prevents custom uh, tailoring, uh, 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 personalization, while new uh, products come out all the time, the system is unable to upgrade at the same speed, preventing the entry of new devices into the market. Another point is that uh, until now, maximum assistance levels that the government was willing to subsidize were published, but this disrupted the free market. That's a big problem. Another point is that uh, people buy, uh, uh, buy the device according to recommendation, sometimes according to professional uh, advice, sometimes according, according to uh, recommendations of suppliers or word uh, of mouth. Uh, that prevents a uh, custom tailoring for people with uh, multiple disabilities. And also this means uh, that uh, people with disabilities sometimes buy devices uh, or products that are not uh, best suited uh, to their needs, leading to wasted uh, funds, both for the person and the government. And the last point is that uh, the government's uh, 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 model is uh, bureaucratic. Bureaucratic uh, processes uh, slow down the ability to update products and subsidy levels. So what's our new model? The new system takes into account an individual's needs. That's the first uh, point, uh, needs and goals. Uh, the second one is a personal functionality no, no, no. profile built together with a professional. And the last one uh, is the government assistance. 
With these three building blocks, the individual is able to go to a one-stop shop made up of a digital platform, in our case, advisor, and professionalized services which you heard about from ORIT. Uh, what is the government assistance uh, comprised of? Government assistance uh, packages are based on each individual's functionality. That means that one person may be eligible, eligible for numerous packages. For example, based on, on uh, mobility, communication, home appliance, etc. For each package, there is a fixed assistance uh, amount uh, for a fixed period. For example, as you can see here, a person with a visual impairment uh, will receive, let's say, uh, $150 uh, for mobility. Uh, with that, he can uh, decide to buy a blind cane. Uh, that sum is available to him every year with the understanding that uh, canes are prone to broken, getting lost, etc. For someone who was uh, unable to walk, the mobility steep, uh, stipend might be uh, much uh, higher to uh, accommodate uh, the cost of a wheelchair or other mobility solution solutions. The same idea goes for reading or, uh, and writing aids. The same person will receive, for example, $3,000 every seven years. Uh, this is enough to purchase a braille printer, let's say, or screen readers for their computer. So to sum up, with this model, we are bringing together the Ministry of Social Affairs and the Ministry of Health, the nonprofit world, JDC, and the business sector advisor. That's a win-win situation. It's better for the individual, it's better for the system, and it's a successful business model. While this is uh, still in early stages, uh, once the program is fully adopted by the government, we will be able to reach national uh, scale and help all uh, Israelis with, dis with disabilities. Thank you. Efrat, back to you. Thank you so much, Ilana, for working with us to ensure that people with disabilities are able to access the tech tools they need to become more independent and improve their quality of life. Government support and backing is, is what will help this program to a national scale. And thank you to Orit and Moran for sharing the inspiring work you both do every day. I'd like now to open the floor to any questions. Let's see in the chat. Okay, there's one question. Can you give some more examples of interesting tech that you guys have used in the program? Wait, maybe you can uh, answer that. Okay. Uh, yes, there are a few, but I will give one for now. Can talk about it for hours. Uh, we have in the program participate with the peasant. He feels that he needs to take a shower every time he, uh, coming back from work, or every time he get into his house. Um, we, usually he turn on. The, to boil the water, going out for, I don't know, something like an hour and coming back. We bought through the pilot a switch smart. He can operate it from his cell phone. And now when he's on his way back home, he can turn it on and straight going to the shower when he get, comes home. Thank this you. is one of the examples. Yes, thank you. And I know that there was a lot of other examples that really gave people the feeling for more independence, their ability to do things that they didn't do before. And as I said before, we are also, we, we really want to, to learn how tech solutions can be uh, economically, uh, how do they have economic uh, efficacy? So um, a lot of people, so we can give even more solutions to people with, um, uh, with disabilities. Another question here is, um, 
do you try to impact the business sector to develop tech solutions for people with disabilities? So maybe I'll try to answer this question and I'll say that uh, in, today in the program, we're not uh, we're using tech, technological solutions that they are that they're already here, not only for people with disabilities, of course, but uh, a lot of uh, uh, tech solutions for all for all the populations. Um, in JDC Israel, in JDC, we don't think that we think uh, uh, on our that our role is to enable. Uh, tech solutions or people that want to develop tech solutions, we have to enable them their knowledge on what the needs in the, what are the needs of people with disabilities? What is the way that they can, uh, that they should to, uh, in order to develop technologies. Um, and, we, and we encourage them, we want to encourage the market to develop new technologies, but not to work with a specific technology to develop a specific technology. We want to that the market will do his job. Um, another question is, um, how are you guys finding the balance between personalized services and the tech platform? So maybe Moran and Orit, you can answer it uh, together. Yeah, sure. Uh, I hope I understand the question correctly, but uh, we see this as a combined service, and this is the reason we're talking about collaborative intelligence. Uh, the tech platform is supporting the decision making of both the end user and the professional, making more efficient, large scale, opening new ideas, um, and helping in the integration of all the elements in the profile of the person, all the difficulties, all the capabilities, this integration the creation of a profile is helping both the end user and the professional to get recommendations they can build upon and work from. So the idea is to support the decision making and to enhance it or strengthen it in any way possible uh, to, to promote efficiency of service. Um, and, and in addition, I wanted to say something about personalization. Uh, we need to keep in mind that uh, and you've talked about that, that we're moving from a, uh, a situation where we're looking at a diagnosis to uh, a personal profile, a personal functional profile, and, and, and everyone can create a profile of his own in the platform um, and specifically describe uh, difficulties, capabilities, and needs in a flexible way that can change over time. So this is another note on personalization. And we have Marianne saying hello. Hello, Marianne. It's nice to see you, that you're here. May I ask a question? Okay. Yes, of course. Yes, yeah, just a bit difficult for me to write. Um, do you have a forum of fair users, potential users, or actual users uh, of these texts. Um, I'm talking about people with disabilities that can join knowledge about their needs and about the, uh, their success or uh, failures in using this technology in order to uh, have um, um, common um, mutual knowledge and uh, able to um, use this tech uh, more precisely and accurately in, in the next generation of users? Well, it's a very, a very, very important question. I'll say something and then I think Moran, you can, uh, you can add to my, to mm -hmm. my thing. Um, you know, when we developed this program, we had a big workshop with people with disabilities, caregivers, families, professionals, and, and the one thing that we, we learned a lot of things, but one thing that was really you know, like uh, important for us is that people with disabilities said the exact thing that you are saying that they need a peer group to to consult with, to 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 ask questions on which tech solutions they can use, what was best, how they can reach to and buy these tech solutions. So and also your... maintenance. Maintenance is very important. Mm -hmm. I agree. I really agree, and we want to, we want to to. 
uh, to do this group. We didn't do it, do it yet, but Moran on Advisor, they also have the potential to develop this group. So Moran, please yeah. continue, Mike. I, I think that uh, when Ilana talked about a multi-sectoral approach, uh, we see the end users, uh, they are our clients. So our relationship with them is dependent on their feedback. And if we're not working together, we will not be able to give them their service as we would like to, as a company working with, with its clients. So we do it in two, in two levels. One of them is this follow-up and maintenance and direct connection um, with our clients to make sure uh, they're comfortable with the service we gave them, what's their feedback, and they have the possibility to approach us as well. We have a team of experts available 24-7. Uh, with no cost. This is a service we're giving to our end users and professionals working with the platform. So this is one level and we learn daily and we learn a lot from, from uh, this relationship with users. Uh, the other thing is that if we're looking at the market, um, in every um, a product page, we have the possibility to review the product and to create a discussion regarding the product. Um, and I see this as the basis of creating a new community of users, but more importantly, um, changing the mindset of consumers to have an awareness that there is an open market of opportunities. Uh, you can compare between solutions. There is an importance in creating a competition in the market and their review counts uh, and affects the market as well. Uh, so this is like, two thoughts I had on, on your question, and I agree um, that's that's the uh, core of what we're doing. Thank you, Moran. We're really uh, coming to the end of our session, so I'm sorry that we will not take another uh, questions, but you can see if someone wants more information, you can see our emails in the chat. You can write to us and we will be very glad to answer. I want to say that if you will take, I think that the most important thing from this session, uh, we said a lot of things and we were happy to share our thoughts, but I think the most uh, important thing is to say that tech today is a basic right for everyone to be a successful uh, participant in the community, in all aspects of community. And people with disabilities have the basic right as, as all of us. So we as a society, we have the responsibility to, to work and to develop this access for every person with disabilities. I want to thank very much my partners here for in the panel, uh, the, the speakers and the people behind the, the scenes. And I want to thank you all, uh, all of you that participated in this session. It was very important for us. And I hope that next time we will be able to meet in Vienna and do a lot of good things for people with disabilities. Good evening here from Israel and wherever are you in the world, good morning or good afternoon, and I hope to see you next year. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you. Thank you.